Hey guys, alright, so I want to introduce you to what I consider to be a revolutionary piece of technology that is called Imogen. So what we are looking at right now is a fire and smoke simulation that is running in real time. You can see that I can go ahead and pause the simulation, zoom in and analyze every aspect of the fire and smoke simulation. So the reason why I consider this to be a big deal is because if you guys have dealt with any type of simulation, whether it's fire or smoke, you actually have to go ahead and calculate this. It has to cache the simulation. And sometimes that can take hours before you actually see the end result. But in this case, I can even go to my node graph here, adjust some of these sliders, and I get to see these end results immediately. And this, I honestly, guys, this is mind blowing to me that I can see all of this in real time without having to wait. So I think this is the future of 3D technology where everything goes real time and now we have smoke and fire or volumetric simulations that we can do completely in real time. So in this video I'll just be briefly going over Embergen. I want you guys to get your hands on this program. There is a free 14 day trial that you guys can get your hands on right now. And yeah, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so if you guys want to get your hands on this amazing piece of technology, head on over to JangaFX.com. You'll see over here it says all new Embergen. So go ahead, click on start your free trial now. These guys were even kind enough to give you a 14-day free trial with full functionality. So you can even export out uh, the simulations as a VDB. I'll show you how to do that as well in this video, how to export out VDBs. So you can use it in another program. But there we go, download it. And let's jump into this real-time simulation program. Okay, so this isn't going to be an in-depth UI video. I want to get you guys into the program and creating immediately. Okay, so let's get started. Whenever you start the program, you're going to see this default uh, simulation and you'll see that they've already set up all of these nodes for you. So every single node that is connected over here is creating this end result that we see in our viewport. So by default, your viewport is also going to be on the ray tracer, which shows you your end result of your simulation. Whenever I select an individual node, you'll notice at the bottom here that these parameters change. So each individual node has its own unique settings and sliders. So you guys can go ahead and experiment, play around with some of these sliders. That's exactly what I've been doing. Like for instance, I just clicked on emitter. I saw that there was a pressure slider. And if I increase this additional pressure rate, I created this massive explosion. So obviously it would make more sense to understand what each individual slider is doing. But also go out there, we've got the power of real time, which means that we are allowed to experiment and play around with different sliders to see what they are actually doing to our simulation. Also another thing to note in the viewport, I can click on this icon to pause or start my simulation or press spacebar to pause or start. And this simulation runs on for an infinite amount of frames. If you look over here, you can see this number just continues to rise. So if I press R, it'll bring it back to frame zero. Or I can click on this icon over here. Also you'll notice in my node graph, for instance, if I select shape, I've got this gizmo over here. So right now it's on the rotate. So I can choose to rotate the actual emitter. If I click on this, this allows me to move my shape around in the scene and my simulation follows uh, the actual primitive. All right, so the section at the bottom over here is the timeline and this is related to animation. So if I select the emitter properties and over here by the transform, this allows me to move around my primitive like this and my, my simulation is following the primitive. So I can actually animate this movement. So to do that, you'll see all of these white icons. As soon as I just left click on here, it turns to a stopwatch. So you can see that it's added the transform position properties to our timeline at the bottom, and I can animate either the X, Y, or the Z. So to add keyframes, I just need to right click. So let's say on frame, you can see while I'm moving this, this uh, keyframe, I'm just clicking and dragging to move around my keyframe. So I can put this on frame one. Right, so on frame one, my, val my values are gonna be on zero. And then if I right click, let's say by frame 120, it automatically creates another keyframe and this box pops up at the top. So now I can adjust its position by adjusting that value. So whenever I select a keyframe, I just need to right click to bring up that box so that I can adjust any of those values. So now if I press R to bring the simulation back to zero, it's animated between zero and 120 and our, our primitive moves up and our simulation moves with the primitive as well. You can also click on this icon to bring up a curve editor, which is going to give you a little bit more control over your keyframes. So we know this is animated on Z and here's my keyframes over here. So if I wanted to extend the overall length, 
of how long it takes for that sphere to rise. I can do that very, very easily using this uh, curve editor. You can also just select a keyframe and press delete on your keyboard to delete it. Okay, so that's like super basic UI. Just so you guys know what you're looking at over here, definitely check out Embergen's YouTube channel if you want something a little bit more in depth. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to get you guys into the program. Now just go back to your node graph, start selecting these different nodes and start playing around with the parameters because you can get some really incredible looking uh, effects with the fire and smoke. I know under simulation, right? This type of simulation is called combustion and combustion basically combines fuel and temperature. That's why we see seeing all of the smoke and these flames. You can change that to something that's very basic, like just basic smoke. But usually I start off with combustion because even if I want to, I can choose to either isolate certain elements. I would just go to the volume. Maybe I don't want any smoke. I just want to work with fire. I can choose to enable that or disable that. So having uh, access to those options is always good and that's why I always start with combustion All right but it obviously will depend on what you're trying to do but again play around maybe go to simulation I know if I go to the turbulence over here if I start increasing this temperature turbulence right you can see that those flames are no longer rising very high but if I increase the turbulence size I get some drastically different effects and just look at the way the fire interacts with the smoke and the fact that we can see this in real time is super cool. So I'm just trying to show you guys the power and the potential of this program to visualize simulations like this. I know if I add some advection turbulence to this, I get some crazy results. So now this looks like a raging fire. Maybe that's going to start engulfing a building. And that's just by adjusting sliders. So it's incredibly user friendly. What's also awesome is that you can basically have multiple uh, shapes or primitives in a single simulation. So for instance, here in the node graph, if I right click and create another primitive, I can, I can connect another primitive to the exact same shape node. So now I can select this primitive and let's maybe change its shape to a torus. So now let's move this up. So now I've got a sphere at the bottom and a torus at the top. And that's really cool that you can have multiple shapes within the exact same simulation. So right now we've got this raging fire, it's looking insane. And you can even have multiple emitters connected to the exact same emitter. So for instance, I could have, let's say I want this shape. I also want to connect that to the emitter and let me just select this node over here and delete it. So now this shape can have its own unique emitter properties and that one can have its own unique emitter properties but it can all be connected to the exact same simulation. So super awesome that you can create a complexity like that just by using these nodes. While we're still talking about nodes, if you guys actually wanted to remove this grid in the background, you can just go to the scene. But like I said, play around, click on these different nodes, look at the parameters and play around with the sliders. That's how you guys learn as well. It's just by experimenting. But if you want to remove the checkered board, click on scene. You can see over here by ground, you'll just click on none. And by sky, you can just click on uniform color and make this completely black. So now it's completely isolated and maybe this is how you want to work. And another thing to mention, if I select shape primitive and just let me move this up, you'll notice that our smoke over here reaches a certain limit. It's like almost hitting the ceiling and it's exactly doing that. If I click on show limits, there's actually a bounding box visible over here and the smoke won't go beyond those bounds unless you basically adjust how big this bounding box should be. So if you want to increase the size of your bounding box as well to allow more space for your simulation, you just click on simulation and here by voxel count, you can increase this and then you click on apply new resolution. Now I just allowed more space for our simulation in this box. Right, so maybe it'll take a little bit more time before it actually hits the ceiling. But I thought I'll just mention that in case you guys are wondering how to increase the size of your bounding box. Okay, and another tip, we didn't cover this gear icon. If you click on that, it actually brings up the settings for the program. So let's say you wanted to increase the overall quality of how you view the simulation in your viewport. You can do that over here with the quality viewport slider. Okay, so increasing that is going to make the simulation look a lot better in your viewport. And by default, you can see over here the quality on export is maxed out on 5. So the program does its best to export out your simulation at the highest possible quality. All right, I don't know if I can go beyond that. Okay, so it seems like 5 is the highest setting. Uh, but there we go. So that's how you would control the quality in the viewport and the quality on the export as well. 
And then there's also this preview section over here, which honestly I don't really use uh, because, okay, I'll click on preview. Uh, but I think this comes in handy for people that are doing flip books. I think that's related to sprites with 3D games. I'm not 100% sure, but this just gives you this thumbnail and you can preview your simulation over here. But you can also isolate and view each individual map that's creating the simulation. So I can just see the alpha, I can just see the depth map, uh, which is pretty cool if you want to uh, see each individual map. But if you click on render combine, it's obviously all of these maps combined into one, which shows us our final simulation. But most of the time, actually all of the time, I've just got ray trace enabled because I want to see what my simulation looks like. And this is the most useful uh, view for me to be using. Okay, and while we're also talking about previews, let me show you actually how to export this out. So let's say you've created your simulation, you've played around with all of these nodes, you've created something awesome, and you actually want to maybe export this out of Embergen. So to do that, to go to your node graph, right click, create an export. So you can export out an image. So again, like I was saying with flipbooks, you would create an export for an image like this. And then under capture, you would add a render combined and connect all of these to RGBA, right? And then you can choose to export out your file name. So you can export this out as a flipbook. But we're not really talking about flipbooks because like I said, I don't really cover that. We're doing the VDB. So I'm going to select this, delete that. I'll select this and also delete that. So to export out a VDB, right click, go to export and VDB. Now we need to make sure we're connecting the simulation over here. Select export VDB. By file name, go and select a folder. So I've already created one on my desktop called VDB Toot. Okay, I'll just call it VDB Toot. Click on save. Right, so you can choose the number of frames. So from frame 0 to frame 100, it's going to export out a VDB for each individual frame. And because we're using combustion over here, we have all of these different elements like temperature and fuel. So we can combine all of these these different export types into a single VDB, which we can control. We'll be able to control those attributes in another program like in Octane Render or Blender, where we can maybe individually control the density, which will show how dense or see through the smoke is. So having access to these export types is really awesome. So you can select them like that. And then once you're ready, you simply just click on export now. You'll get this progress bar over here. So you'll see this yellow bar and it's exporting out each individual frame. And when I open up my folder over here, you can see it's exporting out every single VDB frame all the way up to 100. And it will stop on, I think it stops on 99 because it starts on frame zero. All right, so that's going to be the end, guys. This was another simulation that I created in Embergen just to show you what's possible with the program. Yes, you can import your own custom OBJs as well. I'm planning to put some more Embergen tutorials together. I just wanted this particular tutorial to be focused on the program itself just to give you a very brief introduction so that you can go ahead and start playing around with this program, playing around with the sliders, experimenting and seeing what you can do because this is all in real time. We have that privilege to actually play around and experiment and be creative. So I hope this video has been useful just to give you an overview and to show you what's possible with Embergen. It really is an incredible piece of technology and I hope you guys will end up using this within your workflow. And remember, if you guys also want to see what Embergen has done with their own software, maybe you can reverse engineer some of the scenes or study them. Just go to File, Open Project, all right? And it will automatically take you to the folder where Embergen uh, has been installed. Go to the presets and you'll find some crazy stuff over here like this tornado. And you can basically study all of these different nodes to see how they've actually created this. So this is a great way to learn some of the nodes and the parameters that have been set up to achieve these different effects is to actually study their presets. All right, so stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials on this channel. I truly appreciate the support and goodbye.